All right, welcome, welcome back to the Entrepreneur to Entrepreneur Shift the Culture Podcast. And no, you do not have to adjust your telephones. That is Travis Miller, who has finally made it in person after how long, Jay? Wow. And like, what? <laughs> Shoot, we almost done our, our, our first trimester. I, t- I almost didn't recognize him. <laughs> you could have had a whole baby how long, I, Travis? I know, was right? Matter of fact, I thought you had a neat trail, man. You was God, God, God. Say something to yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Miller has returned, people. We are so happy to have you back in our presence to, to grace us peasants with your pre- presence once again. We appreciate it. We know you are out there on that Get Money mission, which we can't hate on. We appreciate it. So thank you again for joining us. And we also have returning, who is not in person, but she is on the phone, Miss Odaz Benerby, hey. entrepreneur extraordinaire. Oh, thank you. Like minded individual. I love how Dazzy thinks because we think alike. Yep. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> this is actually episode number 72, Travis. Wow. 72. Travis, you've been missing from 50. <laughs> <laughs> Bang. Yes, yeah, so this is 72. And uh, for those that tune in on Facebook Live, last week we actually wanted to have this discussion, but Dazi was unable to do it. And, and that was my fault. That was last minute. I didn't give her enough time, but she's here now. And we're going to actually dive into... The dangerous side of entrepreneurship and what sparked yes. it was a post that Dazi made about um, the founder of, I think it's Golden Cross mm-hmm. in the United Correct. States. So Dazi, yes. if you don't mind, can you fill us in on the situation, the post that you made, um, just to get the people up to speed on exactly what we're talking about? Yeah, not a problem. So I shared a post that came across my timeline. The entrepreneur in question, I think he was from Jamaica. So, you know fellow Caribbean national, Mm -hmm. whether or not you believe we are part of it, but we leave that debate out of it. Mm -hmm. But he committed suicide and it came as a shock to both the employees, the community and the staff because, you know, he was promising bright entrepreneur. Um, He had basically taken the hot party we know and love and turned it into a very profitable franchise. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that article i shared it because there's a lot of entrepreneurship that a lot of people do not think about right. or it's actually not even spoken about you hear all of the glorification of it you mm-hmm. know the, the good stuff um another article was released shortly thereafter that i also shared that said that he had some tax trouble that was looming mm. and he was having a hard time dealing with what the reality of that may have meant for his business mm. so because you know uncle sam does not okay. play with their money. Uncle no, Sam not at anything. all. And Uncle Sam, oh, so yeah. petty. Uncle Sam is wait for it to run up to plenty, plenty money, and then yes. come knock on your door. Correct. So <laughs> it was in the millions of dollars. Wow. And the thing about it is, with the way how tax laws over there, I can't say whether or not he knew it was looming because a lot of it is so intricate. Depending on if you have like a C corp or LLC or whatever type of business you have, mm-hmm. and if you don't have a a good accountant or someone who's not vigilant. You can find yourself in plenty of tax trouble, you know, working hard and doing all the things you think you should do. Mm-hmm. So it led me to think that a lot of it may not have actually just been the tax issue. It just could have been an accumulation of, you know, personal um, business. And it just I feel like it may have just gotten to be too much. And I think it's a conversation that a lot of people don't have when they think about entrepreneurship. What is the dark side of it or right. what? could what you could be subject to mm-hmm. when things are not all you know laying on the yacht and making bank deposits uh, and taking right. pictures mm-hmm. things like that so there's a whole other side that i think is not represented enough because the people who believe in entrepreneurship don't want to scare off the aspiring ones mm-hmm. so it's conveniently kind of edited and when persons find themselves in that place where you know they're having a hard time either dealing with the stress of it um the hurdles they feel like they're alone but they're not because that is actually a part of what entrepreneurship yep. will be and it means to you. Mm-hmm. So I definitely want to have this conversation. Awesome. Travis, what were your thoughts when you saw, and I think you're familiar with it, you saw the post. Uh, what were your thoughts when you saw it immediately? Mike, Mike, Mike. See, Travis ain't been here so long. You got to get a whole mic. Etiquette. Etiquette. It primarily goes um, on to what Dazzy is like. It's entrepreneurship. There's a good side and a bad side. Hold it up a little more. There's a good side and a bad side, and people need to talk about both. Because, uh-huh. you know, in this world we live in right 
and now everything is glossy. Oh, I'm an entrepreneur <laughs> making this much money, and I'm on the beach all day. Um, Correct. And I think now that we have this platform where more and more people can be entrepreneurs in terms of getting into it, it um, having more of these conversations in terms of like, yo, if you could get into this, but this is what really is going to happen. Like, so one of my friends posted, other day, I think it was Felicity Humblestone. She posted on her Instagram. It's like some days, like you feel like you could take on the world. And some days you just don't feel like getting out of bed. Like, mm-hmm. And that's, that's real, mm-hmm. you know, and you got to balance that with like obligations in terms of like, you got to pay bills, you got to take care of your family. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure. That's why, you know, you got to really, one, you got to weigh the good with the bad. Because I think if a lot of people going into entrepreneurship go with, in with these expectations of like, oh, I get to work for myself. I don't have to do and like it's more work. Mm-hmm. When you got to work for yourself. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean like, oh, OK, you don't have somebody looming over your head to right. one. Those voices externally become internally now um, in terms of what you got to tell yourself you got to do. And then you think you do a good job um, when you really didn't do a good job and you learn those lessons along the way. So it's really being aware that, hey, you got to take the good with the bad. Dread. Mm-hmm. So when yeah, I saw so- that, that particular case, it's like that's one case I think that kind of hit close to home to us because, you know, it's a Caribbean fellow. Mm-hmm. Um, but like you have cases of the suicide going on. Like I, I it's lost, high in our yeah, community. I mean, even in the community, um, when I was back in Tampa, I lost a friend to suicide. Really? Like, yeah. Um, wow. And that was probably four or five years ago right now. And, and technically, if it wasn't for her, mm-hmm. I wouldn't really would have been introduced to like. Startup weekend and that startup. Wow. Oh, wow. Um, and that was that really hit home. And I, I won't go too much more deep on that because I don't really know too much of the mechanics of that. But I was about to ask if, if you had a like, was it with signs or like, did you have an idea? From, from what I know, no. As, as far as concern is like, and again, and that's the danger of the issue in terms of like, you could go through all this stuff and you still put on a face because you feel like everybody has to see you mm-hmm. continue to be successful. But, right. if you, and, and, but what, happens is you don't have you feel like you can't talk to anybody about it mm. like you can't talk Correct. to anybody like but i had a shitty day but, mm-hmm. you know what i mean like and you and a lot of people still doing that too they put on like a facade for lack of a better term in terms of like oh everything yeah. is great i'm i'm awesome life is going good but it's a reality but like life doesn't happen smooth you could go in with a lot of expectations and you could still get hit at the end of the day yes. um so that was a shock when that happened to us. A lot of us still can't really believe because she, because her as a personality mm-hmm. brought so much to the community. It's like, there's one wow. where you go to one of those events because she's there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Wow. And so we lost that. That was a pretty heavy hit, but it is a reality. And you were, and you can wow. find a lot of uh, situations about entrepreneurs, um, either suicide or drinking. Like, it don't even have to be to the suicide point. Like, people drinking heavy, you can see those are signs, you mm-hmm. know, smoke. All right. Or doing a bunch of things, but it's just really having that community to tell people that you could talk to it about it. Oh, yeah. yeah, awesome. Um, I see. Um, I think this this is Red Moon Queen, and I wanna. I think there was some typos, but can you clarify? She's asking, but why do I think it says young people have yeah. more bad than good experience? It's companies' wages, the red line on contracts that no one talks about. Um, you wanna? Um, Jay? I, I, I. I <laughs> Here's the, I, I think I understand what she's trying to say mm-hmm. um, and well, what she's trying to ask. How come mm-hmm. young people are the ones getting caught up in the negative aspects mm-hmm. of entrepreneur? Because I think we're going in, a lot of us are going in naive based okay. on what we see in our thing. Because you see the yachts, you see the stocks of money, you see the 30 to 60 second clips, and then someone's selling you the dream saying that this could be a lifestyle, all you have to do is this. People don't take those words, be, you you are your own boss, literally anymore. Because it, like um, Travis was saying, yes, you're the boss, and now the boss that was hanging over you becomes your internal uh, uh, the mentor. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? Because you're responsible for everything at every single level. You're the low line staff, you're the middle man, you're the decision maker, and those things uh, tend to take a toll on you. And if you're not mentally mature to handle those things, it does pay its toll. Um, whatever the pressures is, whether it be money, whether it be contracts, whether it be uh, the family uh, suffering, yeah. you feeling the stress from that, you have to be so grounded, well rounded. And one of the things to, for me uh, that keeps me grounded is communicating with key people, whether it be a mentor 
whether it be people in the industry that I trust, my team, uh, my team uh, it, it, you have to take stuff off of your chest because it will consume you. Um, and I think a lot of people try and go with that one man as an island type of thing and not have an acapella go. And I think teamwork is important and communicating just just a little bit. You don't have to go into so many details because some people don't want to bear themselves. But it just say something and it'll help you even even if in a, an event or a rant, you might you might think about something to help you out of that situation, but it's always good to get things off your chest. Yeah, and I think I think also what uh I'm sure it looks like saying hello from Dubai. What's going on, Sharon? What's good, Sharon? Dubai. Things want to see good. He's living in Dubai. But um, let me put it this way. Um, I think what what causes a lot of young people to experience a lot of negative uh, negativity is because also the lack of patience. Yeah. You know, a lot of people these days want it. Instant generation. They want you mean like millennial? Now. Yeah. And now, social, right but now. But that's how it's packaged to them, though. And that's what I was about to say. Because social media doesn't help with that. No. Because everybody is successful on social media. Media, exactly. and even faking it, you know, they be posting fake things, taking pictures next to other people's cars, oh, yeah. other people's home, Correct. other people's yachts, and so it's creating this false narrative that you know you could get this right away. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people Correct. buying into that and thinking that, listen, I just have to do this, and I need, to, I'll have this by next week. And when those Correct. things don't happen, they're not equipped to deal with that yeah. disappointment. No. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like, is is that that point too where you have? Like say in a scenario where it's external factors, like mm -hmm. you have a boss or whatever like that, or a supervisor, like mm -hmm. you try to do something when you don't do it there on your thing, right? And you could kind of say, okay, well, either like run that way or I'll mm -hmm. do better next time. But when it's internally, you have this like mountain expectation to be like, I can't do nothing, especially if you big yourself up as the entrepreneur to be like, I'm amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, I could do no wrong. And mm -hmm. then when you take those hits and fail, it'd be like, Oh, the whole world crashing out. I need to drink. I need to do that. Yeah. And on top of building up on those, like, that instant gratification is that the whole even premise of, like, living above your means. Like, mm -hmm. people get into entrepreneurship because they want to live a particular lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and I yeah, think but depending on how you manage that, mm -hmm. like, if you, if you get into entrepreneurship to just apply on plans, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like you set yourself up. To be like, oh, if the, I don't hit this mark to get this, then you you feel worthless or whatever. And Dad, I think you were about to say something. Yeah, no, I was gonna say, and it also socially it shifts where you sit because at one point in time, you know, when you are an employee and you you know, because there's so many other persons who can identify with you, you can vent about your boss who you hate. Yeah. But when you actually become the boss, like yeah. I was reading a meme the other day about, you know, when your boss cracks the sale joke, but you need that promotion. And at first I was LOL and then I was like, wait a minute, I don't like how that feels, you know, <laughs> because you realize that you, you are the one now that's the butt of the jokes. You are the one sometimes that's not light or you have to really develop a thick skin because there's not a lot of support. Um, when you are an employee, it's, you know, it's different because like I said, you have a lot of people who are going to support how you feel and give you tips and tricks. But when you are the one who is a boss, a lot of friends and family, you know, you may have an issue in they just look at, well, monetarily, they think, you know, you're on a certain level. So it's like easy for you. You know, there's not a lot of sympathy and there's not a lot of identifying. So I think having a group of like, like Jay was saying, I think mentors and having peers who are also in the same position as you makes it easier mm -hmm. because you're definitely not going to find that support from, you know, um, staff Local people. or persons who, yeah, you're not, no, 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 you're not level. no, they're cause they, a lot of times it's resentful. Yeah. Or it's just plain they can't relate, so they're not interested. Exactly. You know what I mean? For them, and it can be, yeah, it can be shocking because that's the part of it you, you know, you're not quite prepared to know about until you're actually in the position. Right. You know, it's not spoken about enough that you realize how that affects your daily life. You know, sometimes um, things can get to a certain extent where, you know, um, I can't even pay myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't. It's it's a it's an interesting feeling when you you pay all your staff you can't pay yourself right. and they are either resentful about a certain thing that is out of your control that you can't control or they still feel a particular way about you it can feel personal when it isn't you know what I mean so it requires you to to emotionally be very balanced um, or you will have a, a company that does just does not function correctly in the startup um, to middle phase you know but 
it's just, it's, it can be very isolating. It can be very lonely. And I think that, like Jay was saying as well, you know, in the instant generation, we, we didn't really know to expect the slow build. You know what I mean? So it was like, you expect a certain level of success so quickly. And then when it doesn't happen, you have all this pressure and expectations. It's like, okay, what now? You know, what do I do now? And it's just, it just, the isolation of it, I think, can be one of the biggest factors and what causes cases like what happened. Because I'm quite sure if he had a strong um, network or community that were also entrepreneurs who may have been through the same thing or who may have been bankrupt several times that he could talk to, it wouldn't have fail, felt so overwhelming. And he wouldn't have felt like, you know, failing would have caused so much shame and just disappointment from people who are looking up to him. I think that's a big part of it as yeah. well, especially being an immigrant. No, you know, that, he was that, the one that, that made the exactly, American dream that's happen, different, you know? That's, that's, that's a whole different chapter of that book. A whole different level of pressure. And yeah. then they said he employed a lot of his family and friends. Oh, so yeah. to, to face them, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to say, look, I have failed. I think that that part of it may have been one of the hardest um, things for him to actually deal with mm-hmm. and not, not really knowing how to resolve. Interesting. And, and yeah. you, know, you know what that made me think of? Um, What's and, that? I, and when I when I saw it, I think um, Gail sent the screenshot, but I didn't recognize his face right away. But I actually watched um, the episode of Undercover Boss that he was on. And wow. So it, yeah, so I was really like, wow, this is the guy? So I was really surprised wow. as well, and I didn't even know him personally. But, you know, when you yeah. watch certain shows, you feel like you know people, you know, Correct. watching the show. But what it, what it made me think of is, do you think that people should always expand and try to get as big as possible? Because mm. I, don't th- I don't think so, everyone is equipped to deal with it, and right. maybe... I don't know. I don't know him personally, but maybe he was starting to get so big, too big that, to fail. Like, no, not too big to fail. But as you grow, you're gonna have bigger issues. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? More things to worry about. More, more. Um, like I said, more taxes, more, more debt, yeah. possibly right. because you may need to take on loans to expand. Right. There's a lot more you have to take on when you want to grow. Yeah. Which is why I don't. I try not to advise people. Like, let's say if someone has a successful location a small business and they're successful mm-hmm. i'm not quick to say oh man you need to grow expand get new locations right. because they may be good with just that one location right at least and, at that stage right and, and some people are just good with one two maybe three locations mm. but sometimes people get forced into feeling as though they have to grow and expand to the biggest mm. level possible and they may not necessarily be equipped to handle that type of growth you know what i mean yep. do you think that, that yeah, was a because, in the situation uh-huh. Um, very, it very well could have been. Um, however, you, when you set out in business and, uh, you have to know exactly what your end goal is. It's all very, very important to, to start with the end in mind, um, and know yourself and stick to your guns. You can't be pressured into expanding if that was never your goal. Uh, some, some people are com- uh, comfortable making hundreds of thousands. Some people want tens of millions of dollars. Right. So depending on the dream, it depends on where do you jump uh, and how fast you jump uh, to those levels and preparing yourself uh, for what is required of you once you jump that hurdle. Yeah. Um, but but you never know. And, and people internalize this is, this is why you you never know what anyone is going through, because people internalize so many things differently. Um, Jazzy was talking about him being an immigrant and having the pressures and, and to deal with the shame. Uh, of failure, Absolutely. especially when you're from a, a black Caribbean country Correct. where you where you hire friends and family and what the Correct. talk is. It, it, it doesn't even have to be your fault. You just know no. that, hey, they could carry me a certain way and people could think that I was stealing and all this other Correct. type of stuff to, to keep my portion of my lifestyle going and I was cheating them and I don't want to deal with that. And it's very important um, when you go into business for yourself, whether you're small, medium, or large, you have to have that anchor person, um, whether it be a relative, whether it be a friend, that you absolutely know that they don't want anything from you but yourself because you have to be valued as a human being and not a commodity, a materialistic commodity because when it gets down and you will hit your low, you have to be able to look to that person to get you out of that dark spot. You, but see, you understand? that's for human me, nature. For me as okay. an entrepreneur, it's my wife. You understand? Because I know if shit hits the fan and I have nothing, I know that's good enough. Mm. 
you, you understand? And I don't think a lot of people have those personal things in place mm -hmm. for when they get in those dark spots because they never expect to be in them. That's where the naive thinking comes in. Mm -hmm. Darcy, I want you to touch on um what yeah, it's a lot because and, and and it's and it sucks that the show is so short. Uh, but Darcy, I want you to get into. You said it really touched you. What about it that really got to you? Because you know what what tends to happen is when you when you start the journey of entrepreneurship, right? Mm -hmm. Contrary to what pop people believe, is not really just the money. Because if it's the money, sometimes you can just get a better paying job, etc. Um, you're really you taking street? on, Always. huh? Or you can, can go down the street. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's always, but I think the men may have better luck these days. Anyway, that's <laughs> yeah, that's so, in high, a high demand right now. So. Yeah, exactly. With Christmas yeah, coming so up, you know, I could use a couple of extra dollars. You don't want them a couple of dollars. Exactly. <laughs> Go ahead. Hold on a second. Atlantis Crown. Atlantis Crown? Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, so what I was saying is, you know, it can, it can be where when you start, you see so much opportunity and you have to be a different kind of person to be successful in that level. Mm -hmm. You have to kind of be not somebody that's very popular because a lot of times the transformation that you have to take personally and spiritually and with your routines and with your habits, it makes you somebody that other people think, well, oh, you know, you got rich and switch, but it's no, you have to have different standards, different values. You have to do certain things to play on a certain level. Mm -hmm. So what really touched me about it is I know for him to have gotten to that level, it, it took a lot of, you know, digging deep personally. And to see that being the end result after just putting so much commitment and I'm sure so much time, you know, it just, it, it was painful to see. I identified with him very closely. You know, I, I felt that as if I knew him. Mm -hmm. There's, there's signs. What was, that, what was that connection that you uh, felt between oh, the two yeah. of you? What, what made you um, identify with him so closely? Yeah, being, being from the Caribbean, that was the biggest part. Mm -hmm. You know, being from the Caribbean, um, being, yeah, and hot party. Who doesn't love hot parties, exactly. right? You know, so being from the Caribbean, being an immigrant, which is, you know, a lot of times persons from the Caribbean see the U.S. as a new frontier because it's be very limiting here. I'll be back. Mm -hmm. It can be very limiting here in the Bahamas in terms of. It can be, I'm sorry, y'all, I'm doing yeah, a drop-off. Exactly. Yeah, Everybody drop -off. wants to talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's dumb, but, um, sorry, sorry. But, yeah, no, so it can be, you know, it can be everything that you think that you would ideally like to do one day, you saw him do. Mm -hmm. You know, take something that is considered to be normal fair. Like, everybody has either eaten a hot party or it's, it's nothing spectacular to us. So yeah. take something that's, you know, that we don't consider or we don't put much value to. Go ahead and take it to another country and it'd be popular. Like that's the that's dream. A, yeah, and, that, and that's that's the epitome of the American dream is an immigrant Correct. that got to the United States. Correct. Took a hot party company mm -hmm. and expanded to over a hundred and something locations across the US. Correct. Like that's amazing. Yeah. That's an amazing yeah, and Correct. And then the cultural nuances he would have had to navigate. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you, we may feel very Americanized, you know, consuming um, you know, the, all of the media, but when you're actually living over there, because I did spend some time living there, you know, you realize that a lot of the values that you have and a lot of how you are is very different um, from what is considered to be popular there. So for him, having had to navigate all of the immigration issues um, in terms of, you know, doing it legitimately, mm -hmm. um, being able to make strides and to make contacts and, you know, just to, to do all of that. Mm -hmm. And for this to be the end result, I mean, it, it really broke my heart. It really, it really, really did yeah, it because it, it, it just, it, it was just so heartbreaking. I saw it and, you know, I, I tear it up and I just, I read the article a few times and it just hurt, mm -hmm. you know, here, this is a loss, mm -hmm. you know, this is a loss for, for us who, who are in this region, you know what I mean? Yeah, but it's, it, but it's it a lesson just, in it, you know what I mean? It's, okay. it's, it's something we could learn from this experience and learn that it is serious and there's a lot that goes on that we need to pay attention to and not just all the glitz and the glamour of it. Mm -hmm. There are a lot oh, of yeah. trials and tribulations that you have to go through. And, and, and these, these are the things we don't talk about. We don't talk about taxes. We, all you hear about is how much money your company makes. Yeah. But you don't ever hear about Man. the expenses. Yeah. You, you know, we don't, we right. never look Let at the net. You. We look at gross. Yeah, exactly. You look at gross. Yeah. We don't look at the net. <laughs> it, it's, it's unfortunate. That's the way our society is, is set up right now. But I think, like you said, it's lessons and we need to apply that lesson and, 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 and look uh, uh, and apply some wisdom. Mm. You understand? And, and help. I agree. 
uh, come together as a community mm -hmm. to help each other. Mm -hmm. I don't want I anybody prying in anybody because that's really because everybody needs to have their own space, but they need to know that hey, when we see those clouds come in, there is a group that we could go to mm -hmm. that uh, that's on our level that could help us not not only get through and vent, but help us navigate through this this situation. Travis, you missed that shameless plug opportunity. <laughs> I was he I, I was he Ali he, just, it. he showed an Ali Oop and you let it go on off the backboard just now. You ain't even catch it. What what Sorry. shift the no. culture is a community that can provide the services yes. in the Travis. And they do. There you go. So more so <laughs> then I was like, I paused. I was like, I'm trying to pick it. But even I was that, like, I'm Travis. <laughs> no, but even on that note, shift the culture more so, babe. And the people who are in it understand this better than anybody is less of an organization, is more so like friends that you could talk to. Like. <laughs> Like, babe, Correct. like, I think a premise of it all is like, but don't, and we, and almost the culture in itself is like, but we could tell, like, okay, you put it on a, like a front, mm -hmm. you don't have to, you could just be real and talk about, but yeah, it's like, a because, safe place. Yeah, <laughs> be honest, babe. like, if you have a shitty day, you have a shitty day, you know, like when you run into somebody, if you're like, hey, what's going on? Oh, it's amazing. Oh, look. you know, if you had a bad day, just say you had a bad day, you, feel, you got a bad day, you need more of that. Honesty. Honesty and cycle. I currently have one. The fact yeah. that I have to be calling into the show, I'm having a bad day because I'm supposed to be physically sitting there. Right. But right. it's like the minute, you know, I hopped out of bed and I'm I'm usually up and about from like four AM, you know, everything just seemed to go wrong today. And I have to call in. And when Greg messaged me, I was like, Holy moly. Yeah. She, you know? <laughs> she, she even forgot it was possible. Yeah, <laughs> I say, this week went Thursday. by far. Yeah. I was but time going fast, time, yeah. time, time um, waits on nobody. You know what I mean? Nobody. And everybody is, you know, it's Christmas and, you know, yeah. blah, blah, and, this blah, blah, the, blah. and I about to say now this, and this probably will be the last show for the year because let me tell you now, I so, yeah. I so busy right now that I, I cannot squeeze in any more shows, especially not next week. Maybe the wow. last week in this month when it, things have died down, but, but next wow. week we sure, for sure won't have a show because unless Travis wow. them doing it. I won't be able to do it because I'm swamped now, yeah. to be honest with you. But wow. let's go through some of the comments before we wrap up. And let me put Gail comment back up here. She says, I think all of us can relate to the mental low points of entrepreneurship. And that's why we take a pause on this because all of us are treading this road and can be in this position if we don't fight. Yep. And, <laughs> and the type, like, especially when you start on that road of entrepreneurship, you'll get this phase where you just start and then you start to get known for what you do. And a big <laughs> thing that kind of for your time in terms of, like you get a lot of opportunities and again i think a core point in that is knowing where you want to go mm -hmm. sometimes i'm saying yeah. but knowing your purpose I'm saying no go, yeah because you get hit and bombarded with a lot of things and either you'll crash under the pressure of one of those things or you'll take it on and you don't perform the way you do mm -hmm. and all that could affect like how you mentally see yourself yeah. as an entrepreneur and do it i know like that's something i Constantly, but I had to, I had to do that because I, I would I would take on stuff yeah. that I knew like I didn't want to do, but it's like why not? And then I end up like why I end up why I do like, this? And I know I didn't yeah. want to do this. You know yeah. what I mean? So knowing yourself is big. Um, Keith has a great comment. Uh, she says you nurture your business. Uh, sorry, you nurture your business, your relationships, and sometimes you forget uh, how you forget you have to nurture yourself physically and Self -care. mentally. So, I was about to say that. Yeah, people do quickly. Forget. Yeah, no, listen, I, I, it is a non-negotiable now for me to do the gym and yep. to eat well and sleep oh, yeah. well. Oh, yeah. Because I did that whole thing where, you know, that hustle, hustle, hustle narrative. Mm -hmm. And even now, sometimes my days don't end until after 10 p.m. and I'm up from 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. So you can find yourself just on this treadmill of just burnout, you know, and I would be sometimes zombie, like in a zombie state for like weeks, mm -hmm. but now completely non-negotiable. So yep. anybody listening, if you are on that path of entrepreneurship, make self-care a priority. Do not slack on that because when you lose days for being unwell or being sick or, you know, being, not being able to function, you know, it's twice as hard to make it up because you don't have anybody who is, where are you going to go file for, you know, your like you don't have no boss to go to to say, well, here's right. my sick slip. Y'all gonna pay me anyway. Exactly. You know what I mean? That feeling of feeling but, worthless because you can't perform. Yeah, that's correct. It. By that, yeah, you feel like by what am I? You start questioning life. Like why am correct. I here? So you gotta Travis is right. Yourself. Yeah. Like you gotta look at yourself like an engine. Like sometimes you gotta 
You're the vessel yeah. for this journey. Yeah, you have exactly. to take care you of it. You have to. And I, and, I, and I just use a simple analogy. When you travel on the uh, on the airline, what do they tell you if something happens? You have take to put your life first. vest on first. Correct. And you on there with your children. Correct. Yeah. Your instinct may be to yeah. put it on your children first, but they say, listen, you have to put it on yourself first. You Correct. have to be able to be in a position to help others. So make sure to take Correct. care of yourself first. That's very important. Um, Silver I'm Johnson is asking, why did he kill himself? Silver, we don't know. You know, it's it's it's, don't know. it's still you know out there, up in the air. We don't know his. I think his family, his workers, don't even know. Um, but no. um, people are speculating, like we said, it was the tax issues, tax, possibly. Sure. But Car we don't shop. know. You know, we don't yeah. know. And I don't think it seems as though he wasn't someone that communicated this to anybody. Mm. Like he didn't no. have anyone to talk to. He didn't confide yeah. in anybody what he was going through. So we yeah. we may never know the reasons as to why he took his life. You know, we just know it's a tragedy, and we can only speculate as to you know why based on the information that we have. Um, let's right. see what else we have here. Uh, Keitra says Uncle Sam was about to roll up on him. He texted him and said he was going to go need that little thing. <laughs> That, that, sounds like old, that sounds like an oversimplification. Yeah, it's, but it's possible. And like I said, we may never know. We may yeah. never know. Uh, Red yeah. Boone, and I can't, go ahead. That's uh -huh. it. No, I just wanted to say, too, um, when building a business, look at what you want your end result to be at all right. times. Right. Look, And when I say the end result, not necessarily monetarily, but look at, number one, the impact you want to make mm -hmm. based on the business that you're providing, the impact you want to make on your clients, and also look at the quality of life you need for yourself. So sometimes that means to put your ego aside and structure your business where you have somebody that's in place mm -hmm. that could actually take a lot of the load off of you. Because I know a lot of times with ego, oh, yeah, I could do this, I could do that, I could do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you, you, break. yes. And like, for example, I just, I had to, I had to hire a store manager and, and uh, I wanted to do it all, but I could not. Uh, oh, big step. I didn't <laughs> I know. I had to. Yeah, Congratulations. A couple months now. Thank you. I had no other choice. Yeah. And it was very humbling for me because it was me coming to the point and the realization where I was like, oh, Daz, you just cannot do everything. everything right. You know, you have to get in somebody to help. Like, it's just impossible at this point. So, you know, I just, I always like to tell people, look at the quality of life that you, you want before you go ahead and, you know, do more and mm -hmm. expand mm -hmm. and look mm -hmm. at what it is you, you want your daily life to look at. Right. Before you do all of those things, because you could find that you've built a business that you absolutely hate and you've built a life that you hate. I've seen that as well. Mm -hmm. I just had a conversation with somebody I can help wrap up quickly. Mm -hmm. We were by customs today and he was saying, you know, I, I hate this. I hate that I built this, wow. you know, and he's very successful and people look up to him and he's like, I hate this. Wow. You know, this is not what I wanted when I created this. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, hey, it's time to reevaluate, look at priorities and maybe time to sell. Who knows? You mm -hmm. know, so I think that we can get caught up in the hype. People encouraging us. Yeah, man, go big or go home. And I think you that's don't an come important. Here to play small. Mm -hmm. That's an important thing too to realize as an entrepreneur is that especially when you build your career or this path you on, it's never right. too late to look and reevaluate where you at. Because they know no. like a lot of the older entrepreneurs, they feel like they can't do anything now mm -hmm. because yeah. they're in a, in a late stage in their life when Correct. that could be the most perfect time for them to reevaluate yeah. what they're doing. You know what I mean? Especially, Correct. Like, especially people, not even entrepreneurs, people in businesses, they feel like they can't change mm -hmm. because they've already. And they feel stuck. Yes. Castle, yep. but you could change it by this year. Correct. This year game, but play your game. Yeah. How you want to play? I agree. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um, let me go through a couple more. Um, I, I guess they were talking about the speculation about killing himself. Um, Lakita says, Okay, we can only speculate far as I know. It wasn't any suicide, no left behind. Yep. Gail says, to change up the mood, everybody haircut fresh. Uh, Gail, I don't know if you see my hair, but I ain't been to the barber in how long? <laughs> my hair, I need to actually Just get a haircut a right now. Be, I, I need to get a haircut right now, actually. Now, Travis look a little clean. <laughs> You look rubbish. You almost be going out tonight, but I, I, I still look a little. Ran before. <laughs> I still look. Travis working that gum hard. Look at Gail. Look at these days, Gail. <laughs> uh, Red Moon, Red Moon Queen says, "I'm always happy, but don't mess with my kid money or food." Oh, let me put this up there. Slap. Yes, yeah, says, "I'm always happy. Don't mess with my kid money or food. My mood jumps from zero to hundred real quick." Okay, okay Drake. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Drake. Um, no. um, and we also have here saying I was trying not to have no discriminatoriness, if that's a word. What, what <laughs> I don't know. You know, well, when you, you know when you people watching the show start talking to each other. Mm -hmm. I guess this is dictionary. Back and forth. Redbone also says being mentally exhausted is the worst 
Uh, I don't know. There's a letter missing or that word. And take time to focus on you. Everything will follow. Okay, basically, we've been saying, you know, just get yourself together. Self-care. Yeah. So right. at the end of the day, let me put up a couple more. At the end of the day, you got to take care of yourself. Entrepreneurship Absolutely. is a serious business. At the end of the day, everything falls on your shoulders. You have nobody to put the blame on. No. You have nobody to rely on in terms of carrying that load. It's on you. With great so, power comes great responsibility. Great responsibility, especially in entrepreneurship. Responsibility to take care of yourself. And especially if you're in a position now like Dazi is into where now she is hiring employees. If you're now hiring people, now you are respected. So now it's, it's so funny because... In a way, you're responsible. Like, exactly. You. But, but, I, I, but I was <laughs> going to say, it's so funny how it comes around because you, you be an entrepreneur so you can you know be independent, work for yourself. But then you go right back to working for people in that sense because yeah. yes. you are working to make sure your business stays successful so that you can Correct. provide for your employees. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like it, an entrepreneurship is less of independence and more of like just designing it by your terms, like designing how mm. you operate and how you perform on your terms in a way that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. Yes, you are independent in the sense, but... It isn't just all about you on a good and a bad sense. Like you have people that you could count on and work with mm -hmm. and you don't want right. to go through it alone. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it, really, it, yeah. All right. Yeah. It's respons It's responsibility at the highest level because is you know, you, you have, well, you know what helps to alleviate and I'll just switch slightly. What helps to alleviate a lot of stress to and a lot of pressure is to actually raise your standard in whatever industry you're in. Um, what I, what tends to happen a lot, especially locally, if you look at local trends, a lot of people try to do that race to the bottom in terms of pricing, in terms of um, what, how they compete. Mm -hmm. And that actually creates more stress because you're trying to, you know, go after the masses. You're trying to, you know, be the lowest or, you know, get the, the large quantity. But in a lot of industries, it's actually you should be doing it the other way. Mm -hmm. So I think I had to learn that um, not necessarily for the brick and mortar venture that I have, but more so in terms of the consulting because mm -hmm. not every customer is your customer and not every exactly, client is right. your client. So mm -hmm. I think you have to have a very clear idea of who it is that you want to work with and need to work with um, in order to make your, your, um, your, just your daily contentment with what it is you're doing to be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot of times we unconsciously just do it based on what we can get. Because in the beginning, you have a client, yeah, man, I'll I think it's, it's a good idea to always raise your standards and to always quickly, you know, reevaluate where you are and who it is you want to serve mm -hmm. and make sure that you're actually doing that and not just thinking you're doing that because mm -hmm. it makes a huge difference, mm -hmm. a huge difference. And um, let me read, uh, I think that's going to be the last one. Silver Johnson says, I'm in my early 20s going through a midlife crisis, trying to see, say midlife crisis at the end of 20s. Early 20s, <laughs> miss? Come yeah, on. 20s. But this is yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. This is, the, life this is the, life this is the life crisis. But this is the impatience to talk about. But I mean, but she says, and, and she's being vulnerable and open. She says she's trying to see if entrepreneurship is still worth it. You know what? Um, we could we could discuss that's that as a show. whole show. So, Silver, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, come on the show. for our, Let's do our first show in January. With silver and, and those people, huh? she can hang on that long. Yeah, man. Oh, this January is two weeks, um, but uh, <laughs> but we could discuss <laughs> we could discuss people like her that are thinking about it, entrepreneurship. Yeah. And maybe we could help really her get some solutions. Her, her. and anybody yeah. that feels the way she feels. So let's make that our first show for next year because awesome. we can't awesome. get deep into that uh, anymore. We got to wrap up this. Yeah. yeah. Let me see how much time. Awesome. We have. Oh yeah, let's wrap it. She's not too over time. Anyhow, yeah. um, we're going to wrap this episode up. Thank you so much, Dazzy, for taking part. We appreciate it. No problem. It. I love you all. We know you're out and about on the road. Thanks, Dazzy. Drive safely out Yeah, there. no problem. Don't let people no stress you out. And I know you're having a bad day. We just want to encourage you to continue to think positively. Everything you're well, doing it's better is now. Okay. Now that I've been able to hop on here. So awesome. this has been great. Thank awesome. you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. And we want to thank all of you for viewing. Thank you for contributing. And as you can see, I'm trying out this new uh, program here. And it's very awesome. cool. Yeah, you can put the comments up on the screen and everything look this all is fancy. Very, this is yeah, very, cool. Yeah, it's very cool. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play with it some more over the holidays. So put the a step and repeat in the bathroom? Oh, yeah, man. We can fix it up. Next year, <laughs> next year we can do it's something tough, there. It's fresh. Yes, 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 yes. We can be all fresh. <laughs> <laughs> so all fresh up. I don't know if Travis could be there. No. Ah. We can be all fresh up next year. <laughs> Fun, do Travis. some big things next year. And we want you to continue it's to tough, support. Please continue to share.
share the video, tag your friends. Let this be a good deed that you do. Share it, tag it. You know, if you feel like we gave out good information, be sure to share it. Be sure to like the page. All of the episodes are up on SoundCloud. You can find the podcast on SoundCloud, on iTunes, also on YouTube. The videos are up on YouTube. Search for the W2ESTC podcast. Go back. And like I said, we won't have a show next week, but we have 71 other episodes of this show. If you missed it, you can go back and you can binge listen. You just go there and binge watch all them ratchet shows. I know, right? You can at least go and binge listen to at least maybe three or four episodes. These shows aren't that long. They're about 30 to 40 minutes. So you can get a good amount of shows in in a short amount of time. Um, so go ahead and do that. Continue to support. And we're going to end this with every, the way we end every show, which is with losers make excuses. Winners make adjustments. We want to wish all of you happy holidays. Whatever it is you celebrate, we hope that you stay Kwanzaa, safe. You that. enjoy it. Yes. And in the new year, I mean, you could set goals from now, but a lot of people set goals. In the new year. year uh, about two weeks later. But um, take care of yourselves. Be safe over the holidays. And we'll see you guys possibly the last week in this month. I'm not sure. But for sure, we'll be back in January. Peace. Peace.